Okay, recording is started. So today is lecture number six, and uh, this part was uh, nine, so the next one is 10. Okay, so on the lecture, lecture number six, point 10. Okay, point 10. Oh, by the way, do you have uh, any questions regarding this part? I mean that uh, what we've discussed last time, last last week. Okay, if no, let me continue then. So the next part is gonna be about about Ohm's law and uh, joule power. Ohm's law and joule power. Okay, <clears throat> so this is still, still something that we need for uh, numerical simulations. Okay, so let us quickly uh, refresh in mind what is Ohm's law, like the one from, from elementary physics, right? So the Ohm's law states that if you have a piece of metal, I mean, whatever, some conductor, any conductor has a finite resistance, except for except for superconductors. Right? <clears throat> so any any material, any any real metal conductor has a finite uh, resistance. So R here is a resistance. 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 <clears throat> Mm. And uh, this resistance basically uh, makes it uh, difficult to conduct the current. Okay, so it makes uh, it uh, uh, interfere with, or uh, it's hindering the the ability of a metal or conductor to conduct the current. Uh, and uh, so we have this resistor. We suppose that we have a current flowing through this resistor and the current is uh, caused by uh, connecting this resistor to a power supply with uh, voltage, with voltage V. Okay, so this is the voltage so this is i i is a current current uh, v is a voltage voltage <clears throat> so for now we don't like consider what this resistor resistance is really is. okay so it, for now it's a kind of oh so, um <clears throat> Um, property um, that describes the the object um, as a wall, okay, and uh, it can be some part of a circuit, for example, but not necessarily. It can be like an electric teapot or literally whatever desktop. Uh, so the Ohm's law states that the, the current in this simple circuit is equal to voltage over, over R, okay? So the stronger the voltage, the stronger the current for the given uh, resistance. And vice versa, the, the, for the given voltage, the larger the resistance, the lower the current, the smaller the current is. Okay, so for, for a small part of the, <clears throat> oh, actually that's pretty clear. So, <clears throat> but as I said, this is for, for the, um, this is integral um, law for, uh, 
system as a whole, okay? But usually in this course, we are interested in the value of the local current. For example, let me let me make this sketch for example here. So suppose my resistor is a piece of metal like this, okay? And it gets some electrons and if I apply the voltage across this piece of metal, uh, it causes the volt the electrons move from uh, from uh, minus to plus, right? So electrons move this way. And uh, <clears throat> this integral Ohm's law basically allows me to find the total current that goes through this piece of metal as a wall. Okay, but I instead might be interested in, for example, current <clears throat> in this point. Okay, so it gets some current here in this point and this Ohm's law doesn't allow me to find the current here or in this point or in this point. So I need to derive the, the local uh, uh, form of the Ohm's law. Okay, so let me write it down like this. So for a small, oops, for a small, for a small part of the conductor, part of the conductor, we can. <clears throat> Um, uh, rewrite, rewrite, uh, Ohm's law in a, a local, local form. <clears throat> How we do so? I mean, again, this is kind of like rather a result of a experiment or, um, or or uh, analogy, but we can, so for the, the analog of the, of the voltage is the electric field, okay? So voltage is the reason why electrons start moving. And uh, in the, on the, I mean, using the um, electric field or I mean, electromagnetic field, um, terminology or um, <clears throat> laws, we know that electric field is the source of the, <clears throat> of the uh, acceleration of a charge, right? Because of this Coulomb's law or uh, yeah, this interaction of charges with <clears throat> electric field. So we can substitute the voltage by the electric field Okay, uh, we also can substitute the resistance. So this R capital is the resistance of the entire big system. But now when we consider a local area in this resistor, I mean, in this conductor, we need to introduce something else like a local characteristic. And this local characteristic is given by one over sigma. And this sigma is conductivity. 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 So conductivity is kind of up opposite to resistor, resistance. The stronger conductivity, the lower resistance and, and vice versa. And finally, the current, right? <clears throat> so again, this current is like a global current that goes through the conductor. But what is the local uh, characteristic of the current? The local characteristic, characteristic of course, is the uh, current density that we introduced already. So <clears throat> this is the current, current density. 
okay, current density. And this way we come from this formula here, from, from, the, from the global Ohm's law, we come to the local uh, Ohm's law or differential Ohm's law, which is the current equals to sigma times E. Okay. So it's a local <clears throat> Ohm's law or differential. Dif differential Ohm's law. Okay, so in contrast to the global Ohm's law, this differential Ohm's law is applied to any point uh, in our conductor. Okay, the difference can be, I mean, for example, in this case over here, the current in all these points, in different points can be different, okay? And why? Because, for example, the sigma can be different in different parts of this, of this conductor. For example, this conductor can be, sub, can be a composition of many different conductors, right? So then obviously the current will be different in different points because the sigma conductivity is different. And also the field, field also can be different in all the points. And uh, this formula uh, takes into account uh, all of these effects. Again, I can find this uh, using this local Ohm's law. I can find, for example, the, the density current in any section through this conductor, right? And integrate over the, over the surface, over the surface of this, over, over the cross surface of this conductor. Okay, so it's gonna be like like this. So I integrate it through the um, section of this conductor, and this integration will give me exactly the current here, this one, this current. And uh, this is the way how we can uh, change the the um, the perspective. Mm. our perspective of considering the, the particular system. We can either go zoom in and investigate the local currents, fields, or zoom out and consider the, the, the structure, the circuit, the, the, the conductor as a wall, okay? Um, Okay, <clears throat> so this <clears throat> local Ohm's law allows us to connect the electric field and uh, the density current, the current density of uh, free charges, okay? So you, you remember in the, in the uh, Ampere's law, we had curl, we have curl of magnetic fields, right? Which is equal to the density current plus epsilon sub zero d e over dt, okay? So now we know the, the formula for this j, j c, it's a sigma e. So now we can substitute this uh, J C with sigma E, okay. D E over D T. And uh, <clears throat> this formula now is much more like defined. Like now we know all the quantities or I mean, at least this, all these quantities are, uh, 
we know how they um, depend on the fields. Okay, so the, the current depends on the electric field. Why, and uh, one can ask why the current doesn't depend on magnetic fields. Again, because the uh, electric field is the reason why the charges start move yeah, on accelerate in a particular direction and cause the, cause the current. Magnetic field only doesn't cause the charge to move, but one can uh, design some materials where actually magnetic field can cause the charges to move, okay? So usually, I mean, in the, in the most cases, this local Ohm's law uh, with the electric field works uh, well, but there are some um, exclusions from, 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 this, from this law, depending on the material. Okay, so <clears throat> so uh, we have <clears throat> so electric field causes the the current. Okay, like if I have a if I have a conductor and I connect this conductor through the amperes, ampere meter, like this, I can apply electric field across the current and this electric field will cause the current that flows in the circuit. Like this, right? And um, this current, <laughs> So this is electric field, okay. So the current, because of the finite conductivity, the current dissipates. We know like when we apply electric bias to some conductors, to some load, uh, this load, this conductor <clears throat> converts some part of the electric energy into the heat energy. So the energy dissipates. Right, we use this fact for heating water in a water uh, kettle, or uh, I mean, this effect can be useful or can be negative uh, when we feel how, like for example, our laptop is heated up. This is exactly the reason. We have the current current is in the in the circuits the circuits have <clears throat> finite conductivity and because of this finite conductivity <clears throat> the energy dissipates into the heat okay and this <clears throat> scientist Joel he did a lot of <clears throat> uh, precise experiments and he found that the power of this heat dissipation, in a, in a, any circuit is given by the product of voltage in the circuit times current. Okay, so this is Joule Joule law Joule law, uh, and of course. For any circuit, we have uh, this Ohm's, Ohm's law, which states, for example, that uh, the current is equal to voltage over R, right? <clears throat> so the power is can be can be also written as V squared over R. So the the stronger the voltage, the stronger the power dissipation. Uh, <clears throat> For the for the given circuit with the with given R, um, uh, also 
we can derive from from the Ohm's law that voltage is equal to I times times R, and the same power can be also written as I squared times R. Okay. Yeah, so basically these three formulas can be used uh, uh, equivalently for for the same for the same circuit. And uh, again, this is for the global. This is global, global law. And uh, when we interested in the local, so in the local case. In the local case, again, we substitute voltage by the electric field, current by the current density, and they get the formula for the power uh, as the product of E and the current. Okay, so this is local Joule's law or Local Joule law, which says or which allows us to calculate the power dissipated uh, in a particular area of the conductor. Okay, for example, if you have a <coughs> very complex circuit like a uh, CPU, for example, right? Uh, it gets a lot of conductors there, and uh, <clears throat> the conductors, of course, and they they are charged. The charges create electric fields, and the conductors support some currents with some current densities. So, if you multiply these current densities by electric fields and integrate over <clears throat> the total like, CPU, you will get the the the, the total power dissipated by by the CPU. Okay, uh, so we're gonna discuss this power in more in more detail because <clears throat> the the things that I I mean uh, the experiments and the um, so, so so far I assume that the voltage and the current are constant right are DC but of course these uh, formulas and the the concept of the power can be applied to the case of AC fields alternating fields and for this reason we need to discuss, the instantaneous power, instantaneous power, instantaneous power, and also complex power, Com uh, active power, active power and reactive power. Okay. <clears throat> so when we when we have DC current, DC field, um, we have just one type of power, like power which is supplied or con consumed by some by some circuit. But <clears throat> when we have alternating current like AC current, the things become a little bit more complicated and we need to consider, and when we talking about power, we need to um, basically say specifically which, uh, wh what type of the power we are talking about. Is it instantaneous power or complex power or active power or dissipated power? 
Um, so let us let uh, let us consider it in more in 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 more detail. So if v and well yeah if v and uh, i the voltage and current depend on time depend on time they are ac right alternating current ac voltage ac current um, we denote them by small letters u for the voltage and uh, uh, i for the for the current okay so the we can introduce the instantaneous power p which is obviously the function of time so this is in instantaneous power so that's the function of time and it's introduced <clears throat> exactly in the, I mean, the, the same way. It's just the product of the voltage, the function of time, and the current, the function of time. Yeah. So this is the simple formula for the instantaneous power. Okay. <clears throat> for example, uh, in our circuits, the currents, the voltage, the voltage, they can be very the uh, complex function of times. Like this can be our voltage. This is, can be our current, for example, right? So when we take the product of the two, the result will be also a complex function of time. And uh, this is gonna be the power in in the in our circuit. Okay. Um, let's consider uh, maybe a couple of examples now. Example, example one. Something simple. Suppose we have a voltage as a function of time, which is simply. Uh, function four times t to the power of two, okay? So it's kind of parabola. And the current as a function of time, let's suppose, let's take something two times t, okay? So it's a linear function of time. So what is the power, the instant power? The instant power, in, in, instantaneous power, sorry, is equal by u times i, which is eight t to the power of three. So this is the instantaneous power in this particular case. Let's consider another example. Another example too. Let's take something more interesting. So let's suppose the, the voltage in our circuit is given by some amplitude 10 cosine T plus something like five sine t, well, let's take two t, so it's a, a doubled frequency. And the current is uh, something like 10 sine t, okay? So we have voltage, which is a function of uh, time, like cosine t and sine double t, the two t. So it's uh, already something more interesting. And the current is the, again, sine function of T, the periodic harmonic function of T. Okay, so what is the power? <clears throat> Instantaneous power here is just the product of the two, right? So it's uh, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 uh, sine T cosine T, sine t plus uh, 50 sine t sine double t sine t yep uh, what how we can simplify this well we know that 100 100 is 50 by by 2 and uh, 2 sine t cosine t 
is equal to sine double, sine 2t, okay? So it's going to be 50 uh, sine 2t plus 50 sine 2t sine t. So it's equal to 50 sine t 1. Oops, I'm sorry, sine 2t 1 plus sine t. Something like this. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the instantaneous power. Let us consider <clears throat> next the harmonic harmonic case or monochromatic case. So in harmonic harmonic case. Or we can also say monochromatic. In optics, for example, we often call this monochromatic. Monochromatic. So harmonic or monochromatic case is just the case of one single frequency. Okay. So one single frequency, omega, which is equal to two pi f, right? Omega is the angular frequency, F is the linear frequency. Okay, again, why this case is important? That's important because any signal in a linear circuit can be Fourier transformed to the spectrum of uh, real, of, of single frequencies, of, of a spectrum, basically. And then you can solve your problem investigate your circuit for each frequency using this monochromatic um, case and then do the reverse Fourier transform to get the actual response for the for the signal <clears throat> okay so for this reason harmonic case is of particular importance also uh, we have some sort of generators that can generate signal frequency, uh, harmonic harmonic signal, like sine or cosine. Uh, we have such generators in, in RF, microwave, and we have them even in optics. For example, laser is a optical generator that generates one single frequency. Yeah, so this case is of particular importance for, for applications, right? And uh, the, most gen the most general uh, form for the harmonic signal, <clears throat> for the harmonic uh, voltage is uh, something like this. So uh, the voltage is equal to the amplitude voltage max right times cosine omega t plus some uh, phase u so it's a phase it's the initial phase of the of the voltage when when you take time equal to zero you get cosine phi so it's a phase of initial phase when time when time is zero okay and the current current is given by the amplitude of the current times some, by something like this cosine omega t plus phi i. Okay, so this is the most general form for the harmonic uh, for the harmonic current. Uh, so now usually, I mean, we can change the time frame to. Uh, to set one of the either uh, initial phase to zero. For example, we can we can change the time, change the time zero to or so. For example, five uh, phi uh, <coughs> phi u equal to zero. Okay, so we just change the uh, the time moment zero, so the initial phase of the voltage 
is equal to zero. Hence, for the voltage, we we've got we've got this amplitude times cosine omega t, right? And for the current, we get the amplitude of the current cosine omega t plus uh, phi i for the uh, for the phase of the current minus phase of the voltage. Right, the phase that we shifted by. Okay, so now <clears throat> let us find the instantaneous power. It is voltage max, current max, cosine omega t, uh, cosine omega t plus phi i minus phi u. <clears throat> okay, so this is our working formula for now. Instantaneous power. In general uh, case, for the harmonic uh, current, harmonic voltage, okay? So now let us consider one particular example when the phases um, are equal. So if uh, phase of the current is equal to phase of the voltage, Right, so their difference is zero. What it means? It means that for the instantaneous power, we get uh, cosine omega t, cosine omega t, cosine omega t, or cosine omega t squared, right? Cosine omega t squared. So cosine omega t squared can be written as, let me, let me use this, cosine squared, uh, for example, x is equal to one half, one plus cosine two x, right? Yeah, from school algebra. Mm. So it's gonna be <clears throat> one half vm, I am uh, one plus cosine two t. So far, so good. Mm. <clears throat> so let us uh, schematically draw the signals, this uh, the current and the voltage in time. So the current and the voltage are cosine functions of time. <clears throat> and when time when time moment is zero, uh, cosine zero is equal to one. So for example, for the voltage, we have this voltage max and then it goes like this, right? So it's a, uh, cosine cosine function for the for the current we have also something like this so these are two sine functions uh, with uh, with the same phase but different amplitude of course uh, <clears throat> and the product of the two and gives us the power and the power is equal to is given by one plus cosine two t and we notice two things here first this function this parenthesis <clears throat> change from zero to two right because cosine is a function that changes from minus one to one so the entire parenthesis change from zero to two Okay, this is first. And second, um, if you look at the uh, formulas for the, uh, for the current and voltage, we notice that they are the functions of 
time with period with periodicity to pi. Periodicity to pi, right? Because sine omega t, and if you take t like uh, plus two pi, you get the same the same the same value because of the because of the property of of, of cosine. Okay, so uh, current and voltage they are periodic functions with uh, periodicity to uh, two pi. But the power, because we have this two here, right? It's a periodicity function with period pi. Peri period pi, okay? Because the frequency is twi twice as high as current and voltage, okay? <clears throat> So for the power, for the power, I will get uh, something like my drawing is terrible, but uh, yeah. So it's gonna be something like like this with a twice larger frequency. And uh, and only positive, okay. So it, it will it will oscillate between a maximum value of power, which is uh, V M I M <clears throat> and zero, okay. So now, as you can see, the power is not constant; it oscillates in time, um, <clears throat> and uh, we can consider the average power like how what what is the effect of of the what is the um, average result of the of this current and voltage in the circuit what, what is the average power and for the average power by definition any any time, Averaged few uh, quantity, and I denote average by this dash on top. Okay, this line here. Uh, it's given by one over the period of the function times integral from zero to the period of the function and the function itself. Okay, so this is the definition for the average of any periodic function, any periodic function with periodicity t. So t is the period. Period. Okay, <clears throat> so in our case, period, as we say, as we notice, period is pi for the for the instantaneous power. And let's calculate the instantaneous power then. So it's going to be one over pi because <clears throat> t is equal to pi. Integral from zero to pi, so one half v max i max, one plus cosine <clears throat> two t dt. Okay, so this integral is split into <clears throat> two integrals. From from one and uh, from cosine two t, and taking the the integral from cosine to t by uh, uh, from from zero to pi is equal to zero, right? Because this is the integral of cosine function over the period of it. Cosine gets plus and then minus. The average of course is zero. So we have only one term, one part, which is one over pi, uh, <clears throat> one half V M I M times uh, what times pi. Okay, so pi is cancel out and we get one half 
V max I max. Okay, so this is <clears throat> pretty interesting result. So for a circuit in which current and voltage have the same <clears throat> the same phase, oscillate with the same phase, the average average power is given by one half of the amplitudes of current and voltage. One one half. So for example, in this case, the average will be somewhere here, one half, okay? <clears throat> but for the DC, right, for the DC power, we know this simple formula V times I, the voltage times current, okay? So for the, but for the AC, for the averaged power, in the AC case, we have one half amplitude amplitude values. So at this point, usually people introduce this voltage and current RMS, uh, root mean square. Okay, so RMS stands for root mean uh, square. Root, root mean squared values, RMS value, which is equal to uh, one over square root of two, V, M, and, for, and the same for the current, R, current RMS is equal to one over square root of two, I, M, okay? So now if we introduce this, if we plug in these two to, to the, our result, we get the formula for the uh, power averaged over the period of the of the current uh, in this this form v rms times i rms <clears throat> so rms is uh, just the effective value or active active value of current and voltage. <clears throat> okay, so the current uh, RMS value of the current creates the same <clears throat> the same um, uh, power as the equivalent value of the DC current. Okay. So, for example, if you, in a lab, when you measure, when you take this uh, tester, right, or ampere meter, and you measure the DC, uh, AC current, there is a regime there. You measure AC current, it's denoted by like a wavy, wavy line. So this, the, this meter, this uh, ampere meter measures the... RMS value of the uh, of the current. Okay, so that that's why that's important. So and uh, yeah, so this is active active power, active power, active power, which basically uh, manifests itself in some sort of action like. Uh, active power, for example, it <clears throat> turns into the into the uh, the heat, right? Or to something else like some chemical reactions, for example, when you use the <clears throat> electric bias to cause some electric reactions. This react this uh, 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 chemical reactions they also have they also need some uh, conversion of energy. Of electric energy to the energy of chemical reaction. <clears throat> so this is the type of power that does the job. Okay, so it does something. That's why it's active. But now let us consider another another case when or if this uh, the the phases phi u minus phi i is uh, equal to pi over two, 
Okay, so now the phases are not equal and different. And actually in quadrature. <clears throat> the phases are in quadrature. Uh, and um, usually <clears throat> how we, I mean, how this phase difference achieved, we take some sort of inductive or capacitive uh, or capacitive load, right? So either inducting inductor or capacitor. <clears throat> okay, so inductor or capacitor allows you to um, achieve some particular phase difference of pi over two. <clears throat> so in this case, the instant power is equal to um im cosine omega t minus pi over two cosine omega t. Okay, so <clears throat> cosine some angle minus pi over two is equal to sine omega t. Okay, so <clears throat> cosine became sine. Of course, we could start. I mean, we could write everything here in terms of sine functions, and uh, the result will be exactly the same. For the sine function, it could be sine some angle minus pi over two, and that will give us cosine function. So anyway, you would get a product of sine and cosine. Okay, so it's gonna be u max i max sine omega t cosine cosine omega t okay we can use this formula for the sine of double angle to sine omega t cosine omega t just uh, multiply and divide by two the, the the both parts and result is uh, equal to one half u m i m uh, sine two omega t. Okay. <clears throat> so now this instantaneous power again is a function of time, but now it changes from minus one to one. This sine function changes from minus one to one. Okay. And the resulting instantaneous power changes between minus maximum value and plus maximum value. So it is now a function like like this. Okay, so it's a plus maximum value. This is minus maximum value. And guess what is the <clears throat> What is the average value? It is zero, right? So if you average the instantaneous power in this case, is given by one over pi, zero pi, one half u m i m, sine two omega t, dt, and this integral is equal to zero, okay? So now the average power is equal to zero, so no dissipated energy. So no, uh, let's say no active, no active energy, uh, active power, active power. So over the period of oscillation of the field, the field or the current does nothing basically. Okay, so the power is there uh, because the instantaneous power is actually is finite, it's a function of time. But the point is that over the period, the, the field, the current does <clears throat> cause no change, right? It, it does nothing. So, <clears throat> but um, in what form this power, this energy can exist in, in the circuit, in the system? It can exist in the in the form of stored energy. It is stored. 
So the energy is stored there and uh, uh, returned or released and uh, returned return to the system. Okay. Uh, for example, here when the when the power is positive, power is positive meaning means that uh, the energy is uh, <clears throat> stored. Okay. But when it's negative, it means that the energy returns to returns to the circuit. For this reason, we call this uh, reactive power. Reactive power. So we started from the point that this um, <clears throat> pi over two uh, phase retardation between current and voltage can be achieved for for example in the in the, in the capacitor right uh, we will discuss this uh, when we um, we'll talk about the quasi static ap approach but uh, for now we just say that uh, yeah this this type of the phase retardation can be uh, is achieved in the in a capacitor or in an inductor and capacitor is a system exactly like this so capacitor doesn't absorb doesn't dissipate energy right capacitor does no real active work okay what what capacitor does or inductor it simply stores energy okay stores energy <clears throat> between the between the capacitor plates okay so the energy stores there and if you send the energy to a capacitor it stores the energy it looks like <clears throat> uh, the energy went somewhere but it actually stays within the capacitor okay and when you change polarity of the current or the voltage <clears throat> the capacitor uh, releases the it gives back the energy that it's stored in the in the past okay so in result uh, it does nothing nothing real action uh, but the energy is there and um, for this reason we call this reactive power <clears throat> reactive power another example by the way is uh, uh, something like uh, bad antenna like antenna that is not matched to uh, uh, to a coax cable, for example. So it just stores the energy within the antenna and radiates just a little power. Uh, and the power of this badly matched antenna is mostly reactive. Okay. It's another another example of reactive power. And uh, now let us consider a general case, like general phase, general uh, phase. And to consider general phase, let us bring this concept of ph phasers, okay, phasers. <clears throat> That we introduced some time ago. So let me let me remind you that, for example, for the voltage function, which is can be written as the amplitude times the exponential function i times omega t plus phase voltage phase u, right? We can rewrite the same as the phaser or complex amplitude u with this tilde here so it's a complex amplitude times uh, exponential harmonic function i omega t okay so this complex amplitude here is just the product of the real amplitude and uh, this part of the uh, exponential function so it basically takes into account the phase okay the phase component it's a phaser 
phaser. And the same way we can write the phaser <coughs> form for the current. So it's gonna be something like current tilde times e to the power of i omega t. So it's a <coughs> phaser form for the current. Okay. And now <coughs> we can take the following product to find the power. We take the product of the voltage times complex conjugated form of the current, <clears throat> okay? So why do so? We do that because when we take the complex conjugated, uh, complex conjugation, com complex conjugated current gets minus here. And this, uh, this uh, harmonic function uh, cancel out, right, it's gone. So we get rid of the uh, fastly oscillating part uh, of the of, of the formula. Okay, so we can write it like like this. And uh, in this case, it's gonna be the product of the uh, voltage phasor times current phasor complex conjugated. Okay. And uh, now we're writing it back as a amplitude of current and voltage. This is the real number, of course. Uh, the result is gonna be exponential to the power of i phi uh, u minus phi i, okay? <clears throat> so we see that now, this power is actually a complex complex number or complex uh, yeah complex number so it's, it gets uh, the real part and it also gets the imaginary part of the power we are a real part the real part of power uh, pi is the imaginary part of power it's interesting right because <clears throat> this is something that we are not like really used to uh, <clears throat> what is imaginary what is real part of them of the power <clears throat> so to do so let us recall this Euler's formula for the um, for the exponential function, right? E to the power of i uh, alpha is equal to cosine alpha, which is real part of the formula, plus i sine alpha, which is imaginary part of the of, of the formula of the complex function, the exponential function. <clears throat> okay, so let us take the <clears throat> real part of the power of this formula here. This part, this amplitude is real number, right? So what we need to do is just to take the real part of the exponential function. And we come to this uh, formula here, which is states that the real part of the power is equal to the U amplitude, I amplitude, uh, cosine, cosine phi, u minus minus phi i, okay. And similarly, the formula for the imaginary part of the power. So u m i m sine phi u minus phi i, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> these formulas, these two formulas work in, in, in general for, for, for different phases. And again, if uh, if I consider these two cases, uh, if the current phase equal to voltage phase, the uh, difference is zero. So the cosine, <clears throat> the cosine is uh, one. So the real part is uh, U M I M. 
Okay, so it's a power. Uh, this is the active power. So it's a active, active power. And but at the same time, <clears throat> sine of zero is equal to zero. So imaginary part of the power is equal to is is zero, right? So no imaginary part, <clears throat> and all energy is in the active part. <clears throat> okay, and uh, similarly, if uh, the voltage phase minus I the phase, current phase is equal to pi over two. Uh, we have <clears throat> cosine pi is equal to zero. So the real part of the power is equal to zero. An imaginary part is equal to, um, is equal to the product of the amplitudes of current and voltage. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, and uh, for other cases of the of the of the of, of for other phases, we have different contributions from real part and imaginary part of the of the power. <clears throat> um, so far, <clears throat> all formulas. About, uh, I mean, we use the the voltage and the and and the current. Of course, we can substitute voltage with the field, electric field, current with the uh, with the conduction current, and we can rewrite all these formulas in terms of uh, fields and uh, current and density currents. Okay, like for example. This, uh, for example, real part of the power <laughs> would be electric field times uh, amplitude, of course, uh, max, right? The current max, and then sine of the phases of the current and uh, <clears throat> and then the field. So it doesn't uh, really matter in. Uh, I mean, for what quantities you write these formulas, these formulas work <coughs> for, uh, I mean, in the voltage current basis or in the field current density current basis and etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> so, So this is about a uh, complex. So th is this what I was going to discuss? Let me let me double check. Uh, instantaneous power down, complex power down, uh, uh, active power, reactive power. <clears throat> everything is done. Okay. Do you have any questions regarding this part? <clears throat> so maybe <clears throat> maybe. Let's just put maybe some examples of. Um, so let me say it this way: uh, the way why the, the reason why I dedicate uh, so much time to uh, to the power is of its particular <clears throat> importance. Okay, so the new thing here for I, I believe for the most of you is the concept of passive or reactive power, the power which is stored in the system. And uh, it might seems like a, a rather like a loss, right? <clears throat> For example, when we deal with like a capacitor, it, it looks like loss. It's just stored energy without any action. And uh, one might think that uh, when we design electric device or electromagnetic device, we need to uh, make the reactive power as small as possible. But this is actually not the case. And it really depends on 
the particular device. Okay, so sometimes or we can actually distinguish all devices, electric devices into two groups. <clears throat> One is the use, like mostly use of active power and another <clears throat> is the another group like the use of passive power. Like for example, as we say it, active power, we, for the devices where we use active power, we need to reduce the reactive power. For example, antenna, create effect effectively, efficiently, <clears throat> without storing magnetic fields in its uh, vicinity. Okay, this is one example. Another example is, uh, let's say, transformer, for example, right? Transformer, it's better to, a, a good transformer <clears throat> uh, perfectly transfer the energy from first coil to the second coil <clears throat> without storing like much energy in, in the, in the, oh, well, <clears throat> actually one can say that transformer actually is a good, like is a good example where we need to enhance, we can, we need to suppress the active power and enhance the passive power or reactive power because active power in terms of in transformer could be like conversion of magnetic field into the heat in the, in the transformer body. Okay, so you need instead of transforming the converting field into the heat, you need to store the magnetic field and uh, transfer it to the second coil. Okay, so one can think uh, in uh, in this uh, in this form about uh, electromagnetic devices in form of <clears throat> uh, like passive and active energy. And speaking about energy, let us <clears throat> let us go to the to the next point. It, it's uh, point number twelve. Okay, and let's call it, um, yeah, let's talk about <clears throat> about fields, right? Uh, we need to discuss the electric field energy and magnetic field energy, and also how the energy of electromagnetic field uh, <clears throat> transfers, uh, propagates or whatever converts yeah so this is something that that we need for i mean now of course so electric electric field and magnetic field energy electric field and uh, magnetic field energy and the uh, pointing vector, okay. So, so new word, poi, pointing, pointing vector, <clears throat> pointing vector. Okay. So let's derive the <clears throat> energy of electromagnetic field from Maxwell equations. Uh, so we have. <clears throat> We have maybe derived or described uh, the four Maxwell equations and let me write them down here. Let me summarize the four of them. So the first one for the uh, divergence of electric field states that the divergence of the field is equal to one over epsilon naught rho. Right, rho is the charge density. Okay, the second, the alternative one for the magnetic field <clears throat> is equal to zero. So no magnetic field, no magnetic charges in image. 
So the next one for the curl of electric field is equal to minus time derivative, partial time derivative of the magnetic field. And the alternative for the magnetic field, let me write this um, for the H or for the B, let's write it for the, for the H. <clears throat> for the H is gonna be epsilon naught uh, DE over DT, right, this is ma uh, Maxwell addition, plus the uh, conduction current, conduction current. Okay, so the procedure of deriving electric and magnetic field energy uh, relation is uh, basically standard. What we do, we multiply the first one by magnetic field and the, the second one by electric field and then substitute the second from the first one. Okay, we so, so, sorry, so, subtract the second one from the first one. So the result is, uh, so this H vector times curl E, okay, minus, I subtract the second one, so minus E dot curl H, <clears throat> okay, so the second, and in the, on the right hand side, we get minus H times uh, dB over dt, and then minus epsilon naught E dE over dt minus <coughs> current times E. Okay. <clears throat> So here we have this expression, this formula, and we actually have a formula that allows us to uh, simplify this one. So the formula states that if I take the, the, the divergence of the curl, oh, sorry, of the cross product of two vectors, like A and B, I get this, result b vector times curl of a minus a vector times curl of b <coughs> sorry <coughs> okay so i can rewrite the the left hand side uh, through the um, divergence of vector E cross vector B, oops, sorry, vector H. Okay, divergence of the cross of vector E and vector H equal to, um, <clears throat> so here, let us, for example, look at this formula here. So it's, uh, let me, let me clear it up for now. So <clears throat> the formula H times DB over DT. Right, B is equal to H times um, mu, mu zero. So I can take this mu zero out, okay? So it's uh, H times D, H over DT. So it's, uh, it looks like, I mean, if I, if I have, for example, function X squared and take the time derivative, right? What I do, I take the, the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then the derivative of x by t. So I get x times dx over dt. So exactly what we have here up to this coefficient two. So I <laughs> multiply and divide by two and, uh, and, uh, and use this uh, 
two to combine the things up. So I get one half mu sub zero um, and uh, d h square over dt, right? And the same way I can rewrite the second part here. Okay, so let me use the both um, and write for the divergence of electric field times H field. Uh, I get minus uh, mu zero uh, over two dH square over dt minus epsilon zero over two d two oh sorry d e square over d t and minus current times field <clears throat> okay so now i can take the i can uh, factorize this uh, time derivative and rewrite this formulas uh, nabla dot e cross h equal to minus d over dt in parentheses it's gonna be <clears throat> mu zero h square over two plus um, epsilon zero e squared over two and minus current times times field. <clears throat> okay. So let us look at the last uh, term here. So as we already know, this is exactly the power, right? The, uh, well, if the field is constant, it's gonna be dissipating, field, dissipating power. <clears throat> if the field and current alternating, uh, this part can be, can be complex, it can contain active power, dissipative, <clears throat> sorry, active power, reactive power, uh, and well, this is power in any in any way. That means that the first term and this and the second term also have the dimension of the power. So it's gonna be either uh, power of energy of the electromagnetic field in some system or some power that goes in or goes out from <clears throat> from the system okay and uh, for example for the second in the second term <clears throat> in the second in the second term we have this time in the denominator right so power over time <clears throat> is uh, i mean if this term is power and uh, I divide this this term in parentheses by time, right? So it's a time over, oh, sorry, it's a something over time and it gives me power. It, that means that this, this term, this, uh, these two terms in the parentheses is the energy is the energy. So let me <clears throat> introduce the, um, the energy. <clears throat> so let's denote energy by, uh, let's say, omega, mm, omega, <clears throat> no, let's let use the, the W, uh, small. W small, it's equal to mu zero H square over two plus E zero 
e square over two. Okay, so this is the energy, but uh, thus far, this expression works. This is the local formula, this local expression. It describes the behavior of the fields and currents locally. So it's a local, it's a local energy or energy density. So it's an energy density, energy density, okay? In order to get the actual energy, I need to integrate this guy over some, some volume, okay? Um, it consists of two parts, <clears throat> which depends on solely on magnetic field and electric field, which means that omega E, for example, which is equal to epsilon zero E squared over two, is the energy density of electric field, E field, energy density of electric field, uh, omega h is uh, mu zero h squared over two. It's uh, energy density of magnetic field. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so this is the energy and the change of energy over time. Uh, and finally, let us look at the... Um, let us let us actually consider a system like um, arbitrary object okay um, and for this object we already have this formula here which is the divergence of e times h equal to uh, it's going to be minus d over dt omega right minus the uh, power or power density the let's write p p small so it's a power density okay uh, and let's apply this formula to the arbitrary object with uh, some electric and magnetic fields inside with some energies. And we have uh, <clears throat> uh, some charges there and the field, fields there, currents, right? And um, <clears throat> and we apply this expression to this, uh, to this object. And what I do, I can integrate, I, I can surround this object by auxiliary spherical shape, okay? And apply this formula here and uh, integrate this formula over the volume, over the this auxiliary volume or integration volume. So it's gonna be volume of this, guy the divergence of e times h dv okay equal to minus d over dt the integral of the energy on energy density over the volume right minus the integral of power density over the volume okay so <clears throat> Now I can use the uh, Gauss integral theorem to rewrite this guy as a integral over the surface, over the closed surface, <coughs> this one, right? <coughs> so it's gonna be E times H dS for the, for the surface <coughs> is equal to minus the time derivative of the total energy, this uh, W capital is the total energy of electromagnetic field in the system, minus 
total power <coughs> dissipation of the by by the charges in in the in this in this in this in this area. <coughs> So now I can do this trick. I can extend this integration surface to the infinity. So I go this surface to infinity <clears throat> in the area where the fields like vanishing. Okay. <clears throat> and since this fields vanishing, this term here also vanishing vanishes so it's zero <clears throat> okay and we come to the uh, intermediate conclusion that uh, d v over dt is equal to minus p so <clears throat> exactly so uh, if you have some field in the, in the area uh, the field can <clears throat> For example, increase or decrease the energy of this field can can, for example, decrease, right? And decrease of the energy comes for the I mean because of the change of the power <coughs> power dissipation. So the only the only way how the energy changes is the <coughs> power either consumed by charges due to the joule losses absorption or <clears throat> supplied by some some sources like antennas for example you can put antenna here and that's gonna be <clears throat> minus power right minus power here means supply <clears throat> like we provide more energy so minus times minus gives you plus so the energy grows but in a way how we introduce this power the joule loss okay so when we have only joule loss when the energy dissipates converts into heat this uh, d omega over dt is negative okay but what is the other source like how the energy how else the energy can change in the system it can, for example, uh, leak out, radiate out, right? So we call this radiation. Um, this is something that we don't take into account when we expand the integration surface to the infinity. Okay. So in the in the general case, for the final object and for the final <clears throat> finite integration surface we need to take into account this in surface integral okay and uh, we come to conclusion that this uh, surface integral e times h over ds <coughs> describes describes the radiation of field from or to the uh, system, OK? And in order to describe this uh, energy flux, energy, I mean, radiation, we introduce the new vector which is called pointing vector. So S equal to E cross H is a pointing vector. Pointing vector. <clears throat> So it's interesting that pointing vector is given by uh, electric field cross magnetic field. It means that pointing vector always perpendicular to 
both electric field and magnetic field. Okay, so electric field and magnetic field can be not orthogonal like this, but pointing vector always orthogonal to electric field and magnetic field. <clears throat> okay, this is first. Second, if, uh, for example, electric field is uh, collinear with magnetic field. Okay, so suppose I have electric field like this and magnetic field like this. So what is my pointing vector? The pointing vector, which is E cross H, right, is equal to zero. So when electric field and magnetic field collinear, we have pointing vector is zero. So the field, the electromagnetic field doesn't propagate. Okay, so pointing vector is zero. But in other cases, pointing vector is uh, I and zero, and we always have some uh, moving of the energy. Okay, so now let me rewrite, I mean, using this pointing vector, uh, plug in this pointing vector to the, to the formal, to the um, theorem that we just derived. And, uh, and also let me move the power to the to the left hand side and write the final formula like this so minus d over dt the density of electric field and uh, density of energy of electric field plus density of energy of magnetic field is equal to the divergence of pointing vector okay plus the the power density so this formula is known as the pointing theorem <clears throat> and it simply state states that the change of change of uh, the energy of the electric and magnetic field can be or can, uh, so we can change electric and magnetic field energy either by supplying some electric power, right? Or consuming some power and uh, through radiation. So radiation and uh, <clears throat> charges can be used to change the, uh, the electric and magnetic field energy in any, <clears throat> in any arbitrary system, okay? Uh, yeah, so this guy here is... Uh, Radiation, radiation, and that guy there is uh, absorption of absorb uh, absorption or um, <clears throat> or generation, right? Or generation. Okay. And this is pointing, <clears throat> pointing theorem. So I believe it's a good point to, <clears throat> to stop. Uh, so next week, we're gonna discuss material parameters because, because of their particular importance. So when we <clears throat> run simulations of any kind, we need to use some material parameters. So we need to learn how these material parameters, <clears throat> basically what they are, right? And after that, we're gonna discuss um, <clears throat> the peculiarities of 
low, low frequency fields and high frequency fields. And after that, we will be ready to <clears throat> proceed with the uh, numerical simulations. So let's dedicate more time to numerical simulations in this course. So let me stop the recording and then we can discuss the, the things.